Hi and welcome. This is Damon Bruce, and you're watching 2K Sports. It's Tuesday Hoops, and it's next. It's Elton Brand in the Philadelphia 76ers going up against Ray Allen in the Boston Celtics. And now to bring you all the action, let's get to Kevin Harlan, Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke. I'll see you again at halftime. The 76ers are bringing it to their Eastern Conference rival in today's road game. Kevin Arlen here alongside Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. 2K Sports welcomes you to our coverage of the NBA. Now a look at Philadelphia's starting lineup. Iggy and Brand are the forwards. Pause rounds up the front court. Holiday and Meeks in the back court. And for the Celtics, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce on the wings. Kevin Garnett and Jermaine O'Neal at the four and five. And it's Rondo in at the one. And so it's the Celtics getting on the board first. Here's Igudala. Holiday from downtown. The shot's good on the assist by Igudala. Holiday's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Guys, the record was 37 and 15 for the Celtics against the Eastern Conference last season. Still one of the powerhouses, not just in the conference, but in the league. And Doris Burke spoke with Doug Collins. Doris? Kevin, their perimeter shooting game is what he thinks will make the difference in this one. He didn't want to take anything away from the defenders they're up against, but he did say he'd be surprised if his team doesn't shoot a high percentage from outside. We'll see, guys. Doris, thank you. No Clark hard to create spacing without the three. I agree there. I mean, I'd say it's almost impossible with the size and speed of players in this day and age. Let me ask you guys, they're going back to the Celtics, eliminated by the Heat in five games uh, in the playoffs. Clark, are they still a factor in the East? Mm -hmm. Steve? Oh, yeah, they're still a factor. I mean, uh, you know, Miami is so good right now, but remember, Boston had an excellent regular season. They've got plenty of talent. They've got some good young players with uh, Rondo and Jeff Green. And Boston will still be a major player in the Eastern Conference this year. Tony Batiste checked in for Spencer Hall. Out of bounds. They'll keep possession. Here's Iguodala. Knocked away. Now Garnett defending. Six on the shot clock. Goes up on the high post. Again, Philadelphia. So many things that this guy can do with the ball. The last year was the first time in Andre Iguodala's career that he had to deal with significant injuries. Missed more than 10 games. Prior to that, in his first six seasons, he had only missed six games total. Holiday, the pass to Iguodala. And the 76ers tack on two more. Four straight makes out of the gate. That's a sweet start. And for Andre Iguodala, last season he dealt with Tentanemus and his Achilles. And early in the season, you know, Clark, I remember reading about trade... Rumors, uh, that was even swirling around him. You know, but the Sixers rallied in spite of that, made a playoff run as well, and decided to keep Iggy on board. And, you know, when he's healthy, there's no denying that he's a special player at both ends of the floor. And we may have an injury here. That does not look good. Boy, that did not look good, Clark. I'm not sure how soon we'll see him back. Yeah, I'm with you there, partner. I mean, that's the last thing anybody wants to see, that kind of injury. Here's Holiday, following the score by Kevin Garnett. Outside, Meeks gets it to go. You give him any kind of space, he's going to knock that down. Stolen by Brand. He did what he could to try to handle that pass, but that was too hard to handle. Here's his shot is good. And that steal really triggered the fast break. Nice play. Yeah, you're right, and the break itself may have been even better. Bradley against Hunter. Back door, back door. Tries to save it. Turnover. Boston ball.
The Celtics with the lead. Now here's Brand. Allen covered by Brand. Bradley dishes to Kristich, and it's Boston with another. Here's Holiday, four-point game. And the Sixers getting to the playoffs a year ago was such an accomplishment. They did a nice job in their division, going nine and seven against Atlantic Division foe. Sneaks outside. That is good. He's got six. Boy, that's too easy. You cannot let a shooter that good get a warm-up jump shot like that. If you do that, it'll be raining all day from out there. Kansas, three down. Too much room there. I mean, that was all he needed to rise up and punch that one down. Yeah, he's going to jump at those chances, guys. Yeah, that's what he does. He is a high flyer. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. And in that division, you know, Philly, you just talked about that, Steve. It was a, a tough division, one of the toughest in the NBA. Yeah, no question about it, Kevin. I mean, you look at New York, became a much better team. Boston was still Boston. So to get nine wins against that Atlantic division was a nice triumph for the young six. Here's what Boston's going with right now. Troy Murphy, he's checked in for Christich. Green comes in for Kevin Garnett. Brandon Bass is checked in for Paul Pierce. And it's Arroyo in for Ray Allen. Now here's Iguodala. We've got 108 left in the first quarter. And here is Turner. Hawes backing down. Fader on the way. Again, Philadelphia. Right out of the gate, just filling it up. Both teams are, guys. I mean, points coming fast and furious. I can't say I was really expecting him to shoot the three on the break, but he knocked it down. Here's Iguodala. It's stolen by Bass. Now a roll. And the Celtics hit again from deep. There are two guys thinking alike. Perfect pass and perfect catch. Well done both ways. And Turner kicks to Iguodala. Now Green defending. Lock at six. Eight feet out, shots good from Young. You look at their scoring. Mid-range jumpers account for six of their last ten points. Well, defensively, they're doing a nice job of keeping them out of the paint, but you got to give them credit. They're knocking down shots. Twelve seconds left in the first quarter. On the top of the key, count that one. Six points for Iguodala. And I think defensively, you've got to commit a second defender because he's just destroying you right now. Yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, he's been a handful. The offense coming free and easy as we wrap up the first quarter. It's the Celtics up four. Big boost from their bench there, guys, in that first quarter. They did a nice job coming in and really giving this team a lift. Yeah, it's a nice attribute to have. Firepower coming off the pine early. That's good stuff. It's more NBA coming your way. the second quarter beginning in just a moment the 76ers trail by four you know guys i think the celtics actually came into the playoffs last season with a little less swagger than usual i mean losing kendrick perkins in a trade seemed to shake them up a little bit and with Shaq really unable to contribute due to injuries uh, a team used to being big inside perhaps felt a little small and a chance here presented by gatorade to see who's on the floor all fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter on the court right now for the Celtics. Rondo Allen and Pierce for the perimeter. Green is out there with Brandon Bass. Like to set the table there well with the Celtics and their injuries that did play a role in the postseason, not just in the front court. The dislocated elbow of Rajon Rondo also factored in. Steve, that was a huge hit for that team. Yeah, I was amazed that he was able to return in that game and continue to play the rest of the series. But it did limit him. And uh, with Rondo slowed down, the Celtics had a tough time scoring. In fact, uh, Miami really played him 
and, and Boston kind of five on four. They didn't honor his offense, and it really cost Boston. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Doris, what do you have? Kevin, Drew Holiday, the starting point guard for the 76ers, you forget just how young he is. To give you some idea, in his third season, he's almost two years younger than their rookie draft pick from last year, Evan Turner. Despite that, he's been a mentor to Turner, who said, he absolutely loves basketball. He's made my transition to the league so much easier by just being a good friend and showing me what life in the NBA is all about. Guys, their lockers are right next to one another at the Wells Fargo Center, and they could just be the Sixers' backcourt of the future. They've become a terrific team. Thanks, Doris. The 76ers trail by four. Rand. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. That's on Paul Pierce. Yeah, don't give up anything for free. I like that. Send him to the line. Yeah, don't. they don't want to sit back and watch you lay it in. I mean, make them earn it. Make them earn it. Don't give up anything easy. Here's what Boston's going with right now. O'Neal comes in for Brandon Bass. And it's Garnett in for Jeff Green. Tony Batiste checked in for the 76ers. Jody Meeks comes in for Evan Turner. There's a lot of speculation. Oh! A replay here. The Spike Slam Cam showing us how it's done. Wow. No con... Concern or regard for the big man at all. He just took it to him with that magnificent throwdown. Well, the sweet shooting Ray Allen last year set the record for most three-pointers made in a career. Really just a testament to how dedicated he's been to the craft of shooting the ball. Here's Batiste, guarded by O'Neal. Here's Iguodala, hits the... Footer. Iguodala has got eight points. And Clark for Ray Allen, not only has he made a lot of threes, he has been tremendously accurate. Steve, he's one of only 40 players in league history to shoot over 40% from distance for his career. And it's not just the percentage, Kevin. It's the number of clutch shots he hits. It's the, the, the range. It's his ability to get a shot even on his own. He's not just a spot-up guy. He can score in so many different ways. One of the great shooting guards of all time, really. Right, right. Williams with the ball. He's picked up by Rondo. Six to shoot. Feeds it to Meeks. Over Garnett. Reflected by Garnett. Celtics leading by five. Allen passes to Pierce. You know, looking back now to the 1998 draft, I'm sure there are some teams that picked ahead of Boston in that 10th spot that would like to do that one over and maybe take Paul Pierce because uh, he slid down that draft a little further than people expected and he's become an absolute superstar for the Boston Celtics. And some changes here for the Celtics. Christich comes in for Jermaine O'Neal and it's Avery Bradley in for Rajon Rondo. And Philadelphia also making a switch here. Haas is checked in. Fires top of the key. And the 76ers tack on two more. Thinking back to Paul Pierce's draft out of Kansas, even at that time, it was somewhat surprising to see him drop off like that in the rotation. It really was. I can remember thinking about Paul Pierce and how I thought he was the one guy in that draft who really had a ready-made NBA position in game. And to see him slide, that's why the draft is more art than science. But at the end of the day, you know what? It's all about what happens when you get to the NBA, and he's proven to be a Hall of Famer. And historically, one of the great Celtic scorers of all time. Without question. Here is Williams. And Doris Burke has a report for us from the sideline. Well, for Doug Collins, he is no stranger to the NBA, having spent almost four decades in the league. He's seen a lot of ups and downs and said, as I've always felt that the measure of the man is really not how you deal with success, but how you handle those failures and where you go from that and how you grow. I don't know of a man that's ever walked back to his hotel and questioned himself after he's been successful. That's for sure, guys.
Thanks as always, Doris. Doug Collins certainly has seen it all in his time here. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, four decades uh, in this league. You know he's got a pretty good perspective on the roller coaster ride of the NBA. I love Kevin Garnett. He's kind of an old school player. He doesn't hug players before or after the game. In fact, a lot of people think he's sort of disrespectful, but he just wants to win. He is a nasty competitor. Thaddeus Young, he's checked in for the 76ers. Holiday comes in for Lou Williams. You talk about Kevin Garnett, and Clark, you just talked about his demeanor on the floor. One thing's for certain, and KG's between those lines. The last thing he's thinking about is, is making friends. Yeah, he's got plenty of bark and bite to him, and some people are a little put off by it, but he's been that way pretty much his whole career. I don't see it changing. It served him too well. I can't fault what he's been doing out there. Some really impressive shooting. Ripped away, and they're on the break. one-handed slam. Well, he got enough hang time there to put a little something extra on that one. Two scoops of ice cream after that. <laughs> well, that's a play that's going to be remembered for Michigan, that's for sure. So I think that was more like a banana split, Mark. <laughs> And Holiday kicks to Hawkins. Outside Holiday. And the 76ers tack on two more. That time he found a gap in the defense to turn that one into a very easy jump shot, a warm up jumper, if you will. For the three, that's good. And the Celtics lead by 10. Three pointers have been a huge problem for this defense. Yeah, they've been a day late and a dollar short. I mean, and it's costing them. You got to get there sooner. And Allen picks him up defensively. It's going by Allen. They got to get this game turned around, which will be very difficult if they continue to make mistakes. Well, guys, I think it's time for them to really refocus on offense. I mean, already in this quarter, they've given away four points. Here's Holiday. Seven points in the game. Good luck. Gets it to go. Holiday's got four this quarter. Seven seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Allen inside the three-point line, and it's busted with another. Another fast break group. They're just out running their opponent here. You know what, Steve? I think the defense has left themselves vulnerable, and they're learning the hard way that speed definitely kills. And that does it for the first half of play. And we'll get back to the action right after this. Time now for the HP Halftime Report this Tuesday. Let's get right into it. The Celtics have the lead out in Boston against Philadelphia. Their second unit making its impact felt offensively. They've come in ready to roll. Ray Allen's been tremendous in the first half. What he's been able to do from the field has been nothing short of spectacular. Only a select few players in the league can shoot the ball like that. And no quit in the 76ers. They came to win. I don't think you see field goal percentages this high in layup lines. They've been simply outstanding tonight. Andre Iguodala playing well in the first half. He's got eight points and has added some assists to his totals as well. And a look now at some of the stats for a couple of guys trying to get it done in today's game. That'll end things for us here. We'll send you now back to Kevin, Steve, Clark, and Doris. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys, but, you know, anything can happen. Uh, I really like what the 76ers have done talent-wise the last few years. They've assembled some, some really young, gifted players in Drew Holiday and Evan Turner. Those guys have complimented the veterans, and that's why the 76ers are the blue. And so, in the game for the 76ers, Iggy and Brand are the forwards. Pause, runs up the front court. 
Holiday and Meeks in the back. Dishes it to Hawks. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's on Kevin Garnett. Steve, that back where you just talked about, they could be special if they mature. I know Doug Collins has said often, Clark, that uh, he thinks that is the core of the future of the team. I agree with you there. I mean, you take a look at how athletic they are. Turner and certainly Drew Holiday. Still, they need probably one more superstar to be added to get them back to the next level of contention. Iguodala outside. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 man! Slamming it home off the alley-oop. Remarkable. Well, his eyes got wide as he went up. Up for that one. And he timed his leap perfectly to meet the pass at the top of its arc. Celtics leading by 11. Outside Pierce. Beyond the arc. Yes, it is good. The assist from Rondo. Rondo's got four assists in the game. Timeout called the 76ers. It would be easy to go on at length about Rondo's shot, but one theory is his hands are actually too big, and I think there may be something to that. When you talk about some guys that have struggled shooting the ball, it's almost like he's holding a tennis ball out there. It's an asset in some ways, but maybe in terms of shot mechanics, it would be a little difficult. Thaddeus Young, he's checked in for the 76ers. Here's Pierce. Another shot, and there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. The first free throw is good. And Rondo drops them both. Well, Clark, you brought up Rondo's hands. He can palm the ball standing at only 6-2. But sometimes you see him drive the lane and look like he's going to pass and take it and back him and bring it back again. Kind of the old okey doke uh, he is, uh, He's a talented kid. There's, there's no doubt. Few can do that, Steve. No, that's impressive. At 6-2 to have hands like that. And that's a big reason why he's got such great ball control in transition. And that's why he gets so many steals, too. Long arms, big hands. Well, he's just really, really tough to deal with out there. Now they get those three points back in a hurry, don't they? Yeah, they sure did. Didn't take them long at all to respond. It's tipped. It's stolen by Allen. Jumps up. Finishes the break with a slam. Well, that's the problem. just isn't set up at the other end. And sometimes when it happens that way, it almost feels like a four-point bucket. And Meeks gets to Holiday. From 11 feet away, and there is Elton Brand on the assist by Holiday. You look at how they've been scoring the basketball, and it's really fun to watch them because all the baskets are coming off assists. Well, keep that in mind. I mean, they're a much more efficient team when they make that extra pass. When they get in trouble, it's when they're taking quick shots. Probably time to bring an extra defender, change up the defense a little bit. Well, Steve, he's been so good. I think they got to take the ball out of his hands right now. And that one's good by Pierce. You know, it's really the kind of game you expect from him, guys. I mean, extremely efficient, taking a lot of good shots. Well, we all know what a fiery, competitive team the Celtics are with Kevin Garnett in particular. And that's one of the reasons they were second in the NBA in technical fouls last season. He had a nice open look right there. That's 10 points for Iguodala. And O'Neal backs in. That's tipped. Out of bounds. And they retain possession. And a whole new group out on the floor for the Celtics. Philadelphia also making some changes. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Iguodala. And it's Turner in for Jody Meeks. There's Arroyo. Into Green. Over Young. Green, no luck. And so speaking of the Celtics, you know, some have said, Clark, that they go overboard getting into it with other teams, players. And that wasn't your game, but a tip is inside that whole world of, of the play. You know what? I don't know if the Celtics do it any more than any other teams. I mean, Kevin Garnett is very demonstrative, has been since he's been in the league, and that intensity sometimes spills over. And uh, I always felt that you had to be who you were. You couldn't try to fabricate something that wasn't part of your natural makeup. So if you are a guy that's verbal and a jaw jacker, then you've got to do it within the parameters of what's going on in the game. If you're not, then you can't be that to try to improve your performance. So I've always said, like the young folks do, you know, do me, be you. 
Mm. You know? Here's Bradley. He's got five. Back him down is Green. Shot from the wing. Boston, no good that time either. He'll usually knock that shot down. He sure will, but that's one he couldn't pass up. It's stolen by Bradley. It's amazing one player can turn the ball over so often. Arroyo, another block. The 76ers trail by 14 in low to Brand. He dishes it to Turner. Back to Brand, guarded by Bradley. Shoots it, and the 76ers tack on two more. Now you gotta love the footwork. How about that turnaround? From deep, and that one's good. He has six. So tough for the defense to get out to the three-point line in transition. Now here's Turner. And here's Holiday. He kicks to Young. Uncovered. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. Young's got eight. Celtics leading by 13. The fadeaway. And Jeff Green, the bucket on the assist by Bradley. Bradley's got three assists in the game. Holiday dishes to Brain. It's good, the assist that time from Holiday. Eight points for Brand. Yeah, no mistakes on the offensive execution there. Another three, and we've just seen a barrage from long range here in the second half. Well, they have come out blazing. And defensively, it's hard to deny that shot. I mean, that's a lot of ground to cover when a team spreads you out like they do. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. Ray Allen really has his fingerprints all over this one. Yeah, the points have really come in bunches for him so far, and not really a surprise because you know exactly what he can do. Well, he's been in the groove all game long, Steve, and not too many hiccups in regards to his shooting, but we also have come to expect this from him, so we're not surprised by it. Back here in just a moment here in Boston. So as we get rolling here in the fourth, let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke, for the Sprite Spark Report. Doris? Kevin, for that great stretch the Celtics just put together, they get the Sprite Spark Award. A big offensive outburst in the third period is what has them in the lead right now. There's still a lot of work to be done, and anything can happen. Doris, thanks. Uh, that run, Clark, really propelled them. Yeah, it sure did. I mean, it got their confidence up and gave them the kind of swagger you like to see in the team. Yeah, it gave them the edge for sure, because look at the opponent. I mean, they are kind of down on themselves right now. The body language, not where it needs to be. Rondo and Allen make up the backcourt. Green is out there with Pierce, and it's Bass in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. That's who's in the game for the Celtics. The 76ers trail by 19. Outside Holiday. Off the screen. Nice jump shot. Good. Great teamwork out there, really helping each other out. They're playing as one. I mean, they're like a symphony. Everybody in harmony and in beat and in rhythm. Five straight baskets now have resulted. Because of the six. Deflects the pass. Turner with the steal. It's stolen by Rondo. Here's Allen. It's good coming on the assist by Rajon Rondo. Rondo's got his seventh assist in the game. Eight away. That's good. You know, next time he has that much space, he should just go straight up with it and leave the fadeaway at home. Park that fadeaway. Take the shot that's available. Here's Holiday. Timeout called the 76ers. 
You know, even though uh, Philly got bounced early by the Heat last year, you have to think it was a very valuable learning experience for that team, especially as young as they are. Kevin Garnett has checked in for Boston. Then for the 76ers, Spates checked in for Turner. Young comes in for Meeks. And Lewis Williams subbed in for Drew Holiday. Here's a good out. Outside Williams. And Iguodala with the basket, the assist by Williams. That's 12 points for Iguodala. Back to what you said, Clark, about the 76ers with their youth and a playoff exposure is a big boost. Yes. And, and Steve, uh, Doug Collins talked about this. Hey, we're, we're going to get great experience here for this young team. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of their young players got to see a lot of action during that series. And, of course, playing against a great team like Miami, going against the best, uh, there's no better experience for a young club. It's stolen by Allen. Tipped. The dive for the ball. Fires it up. And another basket for Boston. Man, he's got a lot of firepower right now. I mean, what a half he's had. Now Williams. He's picked up by Rondo. Williams gets the bucket. Now he's talented from that range. That's what separates him from a lot of shooters. Allen for three. Basket is good. The assist from Rondo. 33 points for Allen. Here we go with Lewis Williams. Iguodala kicks to Brand. Working on Garnett. Reverses. Blocked. Celtics leading by 23. Outside Pierce. Here's Rondo. And the Celtics hit again from deep. He got that one, but he hasn't been producing the way we're accustomed to. He needs to look for a shot a bit more. And the 76ers call time here. This run a definite concern. They've lost all momentum. They need to try to sort this out right away. Boy, the Celtics have always enjoyed a really tough home court advantage and no different last season. 33-8 and eight were the Celtics in Boston. Some changes for Boston. Jermaine O'Neal checked in for Bats. Avery Bradley comes in for Ray Allen. And it's Arroyo in for Rajon Rondo. Philadelphia also making some changes. Jody Meeks comes in for Thaddeus Young. And it's Holiday in for Maurice Spates. Holiday up top. The jumper from the free throw line is good. Well, the Celtics have so much history here in Boston. These fans have so much Steve to be proud of. One of my favorite places to, to play in a game and to broadcast a game. I mean, fans are so knowledgeable, so much history with this franchise. They've won so many titles, been so many great players through the years. And uh, just a, a fantastic place to watch a basketball game. You know, guys, this is what happens with him. All of a sudden, he can erupt from the floor. Here's Pierce, and it's Boston with another. You know, this has been his quarter here. Still hasn't missed the mark yet. Here's Philadelphia. Top of the key. A couple of bounces, and it falls. Williams has got six points in the quarter. Yeah, they are just lighting him up for mid-range area. You know, sometimes we forget about the value of the mid-range or in-between game. This team has made eight of their last ten with that shot, the in-between shot. And the 76 Sixers call time here. They trail by 26. 105 left in the fourth. Sasha Pavlovich, she's checked in for Paul Pierce. One oh five left in the fourth quarter. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. You know, in a lot of ways, Kevin, Lou Williams had another good year, but took a step back in a couple of areas. The primary one was his shooting percentage. I think he took more bad shots last season. And Williams drops them both. Well, back to Williams. Clark was just talking about Lou. He shot so well in 2010, hitting 47% of his shots. But Steve then came back down to 40% again last year. Yeah, I think he's going to have to to get back to that 47% range uh, for Doug Collins and that Sixer team. I mean, he's a guy who is so important off the bench. 
Uh, but he's got to be more efficient uh, with that jump shot, for sure. Here's Igudala. It's good. The assist that time from Holiday. There's 39 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Garnett backing down. And he slams it in one-handed. Should seal the deal. Yep, I agree. Closing it out with relish. Meeks passes to Williams. Addition now to Meeks. Back to Williams. And he finishes nicely on the layup. You know, he got one step ahead of the defense on that one. Excellent job. Let's it go from deep. And the Celtics hit again from deep. Well, they've looked good here tonight, and now they are coasting to the finish line. Steve, just a matter of time right now. Shot from the top of the key, and the 76ers tack on two more. It's a good thing he showed up today, because without him, this team would be in big trouble. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. Some days, Clark, everything goes right for a team, and they just had one of those games. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, these guys played a great all-around basketball game here. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. For Clark, Stephen Doris, and the rest of the crew, this is Kevin Holland saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Last but not least, here is your Jordan player of the game, Ray Allen.